What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here, and in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about surroundings in Revit. So whenever I use any of my uh, older projects where I have uh, a complicated surroundings around the building where I have modeled the uh, buildings that are kind of around my building, uh, in those cases uh, I usually get comments where people are asking me how I model the surroundings uh, in Revit, how I uh, create all of the other buildings that are kind of just there to add a bit more context to uh, our building design. Uh, so in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about that. It's not as simple as me explaining, okay, it's just these three steps and that's done. Uh, because uh, there are many different approaches for many different things that you might want to achieve. Sometimes you want uh, a surroundings that's going to look good in the site plan, sometimes you want it for uh, 3D perspective views that are from the ground, sometimes from the air, and all of these different approaches might require, uh, or different uh, presentations might require different approaches when it comes to modeling the surroundings in Revit. So in today's tutorial I'm just going to be showing you different types and different approaches when it comes to modeling the surroundings in Revit and what I personally like to use in all of these different cases. Okay, so uh, that's what this tutorial is going to be all about. Before we get into that, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial. It helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm and also make sure to subscribe. I make useful Revit tutorials uh, each week. I make multiple tutorials and also if you're interested in some of my courses, I have beginner, intermediate and advanced courses all on my website balkanarctic.com so make sure to check it out first a link in the description and of course if you want all of my Revit project files check out my patreon that's going to be the second link in the description there you can find all of these files that they like to use for my tutorials okay so with that out of the way let's get straight into Revit Okay, so here we are in Revit and let's get started from the first uh, one, the first approach. And this one is probably what you're, most of you are looking for, like one quick approach where in just a few clicks you get an amazing uh, site or surroundings in Revit that's actually accurate to your location. Uh, now this is something from a tutorial that I did uh, a while back on the software or website called uh, CAD Mapper. It allows you to find uh, different sites on a world map and then you can just select that site and you can download a certain area for free or you can download a larger area uh, and you have to pay a little bit uh, but anyways you can uh, download topography and you can also download buildings 3d buildings if they're anywhere in the surroundings and I show you how to add uh, little roads and st stuff like that so I already have a tutorial on that topic uh, but I just thought it was important to mention it again I'm going to be leaving a link to that in the description of this video so check it out if that's something that you're uh, interested in. Okay, moving on, uh, let's go with the uh, with the first actual project where I model the surroundings in Revit. And you may remember this if you've watched my tutorials. Uh, this is my uh, project. Uh, this was my uh, master thesis project. Uh, it was a science center. Uh, but anyways, here, as you can see, I've got a, uh, well, a city map below this, uh, below this drawing. I actually live here nearby uh, but anyways uh, so here we have this uh, nice little drawing from CAD and uh, in, uh, in a lot of places you can find for your location uh, from your city from official city data there should be some sort of a website just ask someone around who's uh, who's an architect or something like that usually at university uh, people already know about these websites but anyways uh, you can find these maps and then what they I, what they do if I'm not really particularly concerned about the uh, the look of the buildings the surroundings if I want it to be just some low quality something that they can do really quickly I do something like this so as you can see this is just an in-place component so it's just like going here to architecture to component go to model in place and that's pretty much it so if I select one of these I can go here into edit in place as you can see these are just some different extrusions so that's what they look like and uh, basically they're overlapping with the city plan that they have below so I've just overlapped these lines used pick lines and then finished these extrusions you can change the height if you want uh, depending on how many stories that building has uh, but yeah this is uh, kind of a quick way uh, of uh, creating a uh, surrounding in Revit if you don't really need any quality 
Uh, moving on, I have another version where I don't have any uh, too much quality, and that's this one over here. Now you're probably thinking, where where is the surroundings? Well, uh, if I go here to Masking Insight and go to Show Mask, now you can see the surroundings. Uh, now, unlike the last one, uh, which was done as a, an in-place component, this one is done as an in-place mask. So if I select this whole mask and go into Edit in Place, as you can see, this this is what we have. These uh, this is all massing, so it's simply done by a series of extrusions so you just go like this create uh, a little form go to create form that's that's what you do and then you extrude it and that's pretty much it uh, so this was approach used for this one uh, that's just another way that you can do this uh, this is for my project uh, this is actually for my beginner Revit, uh, Revit in beginner to intermediate course. It's available on my website if you're interested. It's a whole 16-hour course that takes you from a complete novice up to somebody who can actually complete uh, complex projects on their own. Anyways, uh, so this is uh, this is what we have. This is the second approach. Again, this is for low quality stuff, but if this is something that you're interested in, it does do the job really quickly. And moving over to the final one, this is the one that where I probably get the most questions from. Uh, this is what I did from uh, one of my other projects. Now, this was actually done as a team effort. As you can see, uh, this building here, uh, this one over here, so if, if you can see my mouse, that's the actual uh, project site. Now the rest of this is just the surroundings. So this was done, as I said, as a team effort. We uh, d basically divided out a uh, part of the city, uh, and again we had CAD maps uh, just like here just like these here, so basically these block maps, and then we used that and then Google Street View to get the accurate look of the buildings. And for kind of for the larger surroundings, as you can see, the buildings are quite simple. They're uh, all modeled with walls and roofs and floors and so on, just because it's easier to get more complex shapes that way, like these sloped roofs and all of that. So as you can see, this is all quite, quite accurate. Same thing here. As you can see, so uh, the idea is to be as accurate as possible with these. Here we have our church. Now, so this is something that would take probably a bit too long if you were modeling it as an in-place component or as an in-place mass. Uh, now, moving closer here for these buildings, which are actually on the same city block as the actual project. As you can see there, uh, we've added windows. Actually, my part of this team effort was to model all of these buildings that are around the actual building site. So I modeled uh, this little church. As you can see, it has church windows uh, and uh, these uh, buildings all around. So that was the idea. See here, we have these nice little terraces. Uh, so if you want to do it uh, kind of a high quality version, in that case, I'm sorry, you have to do it manually. And again, as I said, uh, Google Street View in combination with uh, local CAD maps is probably the best way to go around it, uh, go about it. And again, these are all walls uh, and then doors and windows and roofs and so on. So uh, unfortunately, there isn't a, a quicker way of achieving uh, something like this. But uh, again, as I said, uh, a tip is to use uh, pick lines as much as possible. So uh, if I go to, huh, let's see, if I go to one of these, for example, uh, what you can do is, uh, let's open up the site plan. Here's the site plan. So basically for creating something like this, uh, you go here to edit in place, and then uh, basically you go to here to create extrusion and then uh, these yellow lines are kind of difficult to see but you can basically use pick lines just like this go all the way around selecting all of these lines just like that and here we have a bit of an angle. Now you can leave it like this or you can kind of clean it up a little bit so for example in this case I can delete this and then use arcs to make it look just a little bit nicer something like that and then you just hit finish uh, go to the 3d view find that okay so it's a way too long a way too high so this building is probably something like that now of course uh, you would use this in conjunction with uh, Google uh, Google Maps or a Google Street View where you can kind of orbit around and see actual buildings and then you can kind of count the count the floors and uh, what I like to do for my uh, kind of calculation is to go with around three and a half meters per uh, per floor. So if you, if you see the building has, I don't know, uh, uh, it has three floors, that would mean 
three floors plus the kind of the ground floor so that would make it four so that's 12 plus uh, uh, two so that's what 14 so that would make it 14 meters so here for the extrusion end I would just type in 14 uh, meters so this is what I would do for a kind of a uh, three-story building uh, now also keep in mind that it should kind of start from street level so it would start from here uh, then this should probably be I don't know 14.16 or something like that I guess it doesn't make that much difference here but if the building was somewhere else where they kind of go a bit deeper into the ground as you can see here uh, that's what you have to do and also here you can see for this one for example I used a void uh, to cut in here an entrance for uh, vehicles because for my project I had this ramp that leads to the uh, to the garage for the building so I had to have this entrance uh, kind of visible and we can just finish that model to uh, close that off okay so that that's the approach so uh, I've shown you how to use either CAD mapper now again as I said I encourage you to watch that video I think it's super helpful and it does get the job probably in the quickest possible uh, time uh, so that's the, the the number one approach I would go for the second one is probably something like this I, I really like uh, in place uh, components I think they're really super easy to create and then finally uh, uh, another option is to kind of go manually and model everything out like this it is going to take the longest but in the end it is going to give you the nicest uh, nicest result so that's why I prefer uh, going like this if I have projects where the uh, the site the, the surroundings are super important uh, this is what I opt for so there you go that's uh, that's the whole tutorial so uh, thank you very much uh, please tell me in the comment section below uh, what is the approach that you prefer using uh, do you like my approach do you think it's silly uh, so a comment down below the video make sure to like and share this video make sure to subscribe I make useful Revit tutorials each week I make multiple tutorials and also I make those advanced courses so check out the balkanarchitect.com it's going to be the first link in the description so that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.